Step into a world of wacky wonders with Pee Wee's Playhouse, a 1986 TV series that's a roller coaster of funny, shocking, and even a few sad surprises. The show introduces you to Pee Wee Herman, a quirky character with an equally quirky home filled with talking furniture and oddball pals. As you dive into the episodes, you'll discover a myriad of roles and characters that add spice to the series. So, which one is your favorite? With a cast as eccentric as this, picking just one might be a challenge. Do you recall a particular scene or moment that left a lasting impact on you? With Pee Wee's Playhouse, there's always something unexpected around the corner. Stay tuned, because we've got a bag full of funny, shocking, and even a few heartstring tugging facts about this classic series. Keep your eyes peeled for those, and in the meantime, share your thoughts. What's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this unforgettable show? We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Get ready for a trip down memory lane filled with laughter, surprises, and a touch of nostalgia. It's Pee Wee's Playhouse, where every episode is a wild ride. The 1986 TV series Pee Wee's Playhouse holds a distinct place in the history of children's television programming. Despite its classification as a children's program, it transcended traditional boundaries with its humor and broad appeal to a diverse audience. Notably departing from the conventional children's shows on networks like PBS, it marked a shift in the landscape of programming for young viewers. During this era, the show emerged as part of a golden age of television, complementing classics such as Sesame Street, Electric Company, and 321 Contact. It symbolized the end of an era blending whimsical entertainment with a unique charm that resonated not only with children but also teens and young adults. Unlike other shows of its time, it managed to captivate audiences without requiring them to be exclusively young or have access to cable television. The characters, including Pee Wee himself, Jambai, Cherry, and Miss Yvonne, each brought their own charm to the playhouse. The eccentricities of the characters and the surreal atmosphere created an unforgettable viewing experience. Despite the show's light-hearted nature, the main character, portrayed by Paul Rubens, presented a persona that, while well-groomed, seemed to straddle the line between an overgrown child attempting maturity and an endearing kindness. One interesting revelation for viewers was recognizing familiar faces like Lawrence Fishburne, who played Cowboy Curtis. The show's impact extended beyond the playhouse, with Paul Rubens making appearances in other roles, such as a monkey hunter in the film Dunstan Checks In. However, Rubens' personal life took a challenging turn, leading to the cancellation of the show. Nevertheless, he eventually returned to acting, showcasing the resilience of its legacy. As a viewer with a background in history, acting, singing, dancing, makeup artistry, and film critique, my appreciation for the show extends beyond nostalgia. It stands as a testament to the unique era of television that brought joy to audiences of various ages. The TV series, along with other childhood favorites like Howdy Doody and the Mickey Mouse Club, holds a cherished place in the hearts of those who experienced the magic of children's programming during that time. In retrospect, it was a perfect example of how children's television programming could transcend its intended audience, creating a timeless and memorable viewing experience for all. The laughter, the characters, and the surreal world of the playhouse remain etched in the memories of those fortunate enough to have experienced this iconic show. Amidst the zany realm of Pee Wee's Playhouse, John Singleton served as an unexpected presence as security guard on set adding an interesting layer to the behind-the-scenes dynamics. Mark Mothersbaugh, the creative force behind the show's musical backdrop, operated on a tight schedule. He crafted the episode's music a mere four days prior to its airing, revealing the unique and last-minute approach to the show's sonic landscape. Paul Rubens, driven by the triumph of Pee-wee's Big Adventure, initially considered an animated series but pivoted to a live-action format at CBS's behest. In this venture, he assumed the roles of actor, producer, and director. The animated attempt fell flat, prompting the shift to the unconventional live-action setup that became the hallmark of the series. The Playhouse's legacy, however, extended beyond the small screen. Despite a tumultuous period leading to the show's cancellation, Rubens bounced back, showcasing the resilience of the series and its enduring impact on his career. In the course of Pee Wee's Playhouse, significant changes unfolded in the show's dynamics. As season two kicked off, the production shifted from a New York City warehouse to Hollywood Center Studios, leading to alterations in the cast and set design. 
This transition allowed wood for a more expansive stage, bringing about modifications in personnel and an enhanced backdrop. Cindy Lauper, a notable name in the music industry, performed the theme song credited under the alias Ellen Shaw. Meanwhile, throughout the series, Paul Rubens stood as the solitary cast member to grace each episode with his presence, solidifying his central role in the show's consistency. These nuanced details provide a glimpse into the show's evolution and the collaborative efforts shaping its identity. From studio relocations to iconic theme songs, Pee-wee's Playhouse maintained its quirky allure with Paul Rubens at the helm of its enduring presence. The fourth and fifth seasons of the TV series were shot consecutively, breaking the usual pattern of taking a break between seasons. Although CBS proposed a deal for a sixth season, exhaustion led Paul Rubens to decline the offer. This show originated as a spin-off of The Pee-Wee Herman Show. Contrary to popular belief, the series concluded in 1991 due to a mutual agreement between Paul Rubens and CBS. Rubens' indictment for obscenity, stemming from an incident in a Florida adult theater, is often assumed to be the primary reason for the cancellation. However, CBS chose not to air the planned reruns in August 1991, making the final network telecast on July 27, 1991. The show's cancellation marked the end of an era in children's television, deviating from conventional norms with its humor and broad appeal. Despite its classification as a children's program, it reached a diverse audience and symbolized a shift in programming for young viewers. The eccentric characters like Pee-wee, Jambi, Cherry, and Miss Yvonne each brought their unique charm to the series. Amidst the quirky world of Pee-wee's Playhouse, unexpected elements like John Singleton serving as a security guard on set and Mark Motherspaugh crafting the musical backdrop on a tight schedule added interesting layers to the behind-the-scenes dynamics. Paul Rubens, the driving force behind the show, initially contemplated an animated series but shifted to a live-action format showcasing his versatility as an actor, producer, and director. Season 2 witnessed significant changes as the production moved from a New York City warehouse to Hollywood Center Studios, prompting alterations in cast and set design. Cindy Lauper, under the alias Ellen Shaw, performed the theme song contributing to the show's evolution. Throughout its run, Paul Rubens remained the sole constant cast member, underscoring his central role in maintaining the show's consistency. In retrospect, Pee-wee's Playhouse holds a unique place in the history of television, showcasing the resilience of its legacy despite challenges. The laughter, characters, and the surreal world of the Playhouse remain etched in the memories of those who experienced this iconic show.